Hello, everyone. I think we'll get started. It's the top of the hour, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I'm Ranjana Kishore. I'm a curator, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the first webinar in the Worm-Based Webinar series. In today's webinar, my colleague Wen Chen will give an overview of uh, worm-based data and tools. A couple of things to note before we um, begin. The presentation itself will take 40 minutes, followed by a 20-minute question and answer session. Note that we'll mute all participants during the presentation. Um, feel free to type questions into the chat panel during the presentation. Our chat moderators will collect all these questions and they will get answered uh, during the Q&A session at the end. Uh, this webinar, including the Q&A, will be recorded and posted at a later date on, D on YouTube. And as always, if you have questions that did not get answered or you feel that you need further clarification, please contact us during the please contact us using our email, help at wormbase.org. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Wen, are you ready to start? Yes, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'm sorry if you came here for Chris. Uh, he's not feeling well this morning, so I'm going to speak on his behalf. So uh, I'm going to share my screen now, and if you have... Ben, you might you can turn just, off the just, you can turn off the enter uh, bell. You should be able to silence your the bell that says everyone's entering. Oh, I think that's all right. I think I'm just going to share my screen and start to talk. It actually doesn't bother me. So can everyone see my screen? Yes, I guess so I can see that on my other tree. So you have all been using Wormbase, uh, I'm sure some of you at least, and I want to give a brief interview, uh, an overview of the Wormbase data and the tools. And so Wormbase, we have, we have uh, several different sites uh, distributed uh, in different parts of the world. So, um, yeah, so I'm from Caltech. Most of us are from Caltech. And we have a Caltech team for curators, and we have uh, Ontario, like uh, for the web team, and some of them are here today. And we also have Hingston, who are sequence curators. And in Caltech, we focus on literature curation. All right. And uh, we have phenotype. Sorry. We have phenotype, we have uh, expression patterns, we have large scale expression from uh, high throughput data. We also have gene ontology annotation as well as human disease models, uh, information related to, to human disease. And at the same time, we have uh, physical interactions, gene, generic intera uh, genetic uh, interaction, regulatory interactions. We also capture reagents used for experiments, uh, including like chance genes, constructs, antibodies. We also uh, annotate the small molecules and substance, anatomy function, site of action, and worm-based uh, processes and topics. Um, so you're going to hear a lot more of our future webinars. And in Wormbase, uh, a huge, uh, what is very important to us is that we have to capture all information in controlled vocabulary. So, so that like things can be easily searched and sorted. And Wormbase mon uh, manage uh, several types of ontology terms, anatomy, anatomy ontology uh, for the tissue types and cells. We have phenotype ontology to describe different kinds of phenotypes. And we also have developmental life, life stage ontology. And at the same time, collaborate with gene ontology uh, team uh, to manage gene ontology and also human disease ontology and phenotype ontology. And I'm going to introduce a few worm-based query tools. The first one is gene name sanitizer. sanitizer and you can find that uh, in Wormbase uh, tools menu. 
gene uh, named sanitizer is a new tool we just developed uh, in July and publicized it. And the reason we have this tool is because you may not realize gene names get uh, renamed from time to time. And if you read a literature, if you see a list of gene names like 10 years ago, they might have changed and referred to something different. So in one base, uh, in the gene name sanitizer search tool, you can enter a list of uh, gene names. And as a result, you will see uh, their current uh, situation. Like for example, KP1 uh, is a valid gene name, um, but it refers to multiple genes. It's an official name for this gene, and it's an other name for, for, for another gene. So like uh, by entering a list of names in gene name sanitizer, you can see their current status and uh, find the most likely uh, gene IDs that match them. That is very important when you do data mining, because when you do data mining, for example, uh, like simple mine, uh, you enter a list of gene names, and sometimes you may not get uh, what you expect to see. But it, with a valid list of gene names uh, or gene uh, that cannot be wrong. And simple mine is a tool, it's a very simple tool for people want to get a quick uh, query results for a list of genes. Uh, simple mine is for multiple uh, nematode species. And for, so the first step after you enter simple mine in uh, one base page, you have to select your uh, species name. For example, you select uh, the elegance. And you can also select uh, what kind of output you want. You want to display a HTML uh, format or you want to download a type eliminated file. And in Simple Mind, we have about 30 types of uh, data types that people frequently use to query. Uh, for example, you want to convert your gene names or gene IDs to another kind of uh, gene IDs in another platform like Uniprod. Or if you, can you want to find a genetic or phenotype information or expression patterns or uh, author logs or functional annotation like uh, uh, automated description. And you can enter them in Simple Mind and then you directly get a list of, uh, you enter them in the sim simple mind query box, and then you can get a list of uh, genes uh, as a tab delimited uh, table. And please uh, uh, keep in mind that if you import this uh, data into Excel, some of the gene names will be converted into dates. So you have to import them uh, in, um, as text, not as general, just something uh, to keep in mind. And Simple Mind is a tool for very uh, the most fundamental, the basic use uh, of data. And we have another tool called Warm Mind. We have another tool called Warm Mind uh, in the same uh, 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 that that's a, that has more data type. And in Warm Mind, uh, it actually if we say like Simple Mind is a Seven Eleven, Warm Mind is like a, a Walmart. It has 95% of data in one base, um, but because it uh, has so much data, the search is more complicated. So to help users, uh, we developed the world mind and templates. Like you can select topics, you can select uh, which template you want to use. For example, you can select um, uh, genes with that are specific type of uh, transcript in certain species. And in world mind, you can, uh, you can use this template to build your query, and you can uh, edit the query and by like I say, I want this column, I don't want that column. And then you can show the results and you can get a table. And this table, you can manage them, you can uh, manage the columns, a set a filter to find, uh, to figure out like what, to, to slim them down to what you want and you can export the table uh, into your local machine. And also, like if you're very good at uh, uh, data schema, one might also give provide a query builder. Like you can start from scratch instead of using our template. You can select one of the data models, and then you can look at, uh, for example, you want to look at a uh, gene data model, and you can look at all the text under that data model. You can select uh, what you want. So I'm not going to go through uh, details of WormMind uh, because we have a specific uh, webinar feature WormMind in, in December by Chris Grove. 
And I also want to introduce Parasite Biomart. And Parasite Biomart actually is the best tool for sequence feature. Like uh, oftentimes, like uh, people come to ask me, like how can we get like a three prime uh, UTR or, or information like that? And Parasite uh, uh, Biomart actually has uh, very good information for 167 species, nematode species. And you can select your species and then like uh, there you can construct your query. You can select like a, uh, for example, you can select like a, you want to get a sequence, you can, what kind of sequence like a, you want to download, like a, for example, a five prime UTR. And then like a, you can get the results uh, from 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 one based parasite uh, biomart, and I'm not going to go through details of parasite biomart because we also have a webinar coming in January um, to present the details about how to use parasite biomart. And Chris made this very nice uh, table to compare different one based data mining tools, and uh, I think we're going to make this public uh, in some way uh, in the near future. So stay tuned. And I'm going to introduce the OneBase uh, public FTP site. Uh, on the download menu of uh, OneBase, you can access our public uh, FTP site. It has like hundreds of uh, flat files for you to get. And also I want to remind you, oftentimes like, uh, uh, people ask us, how can we get the data from a previous release? And actually the public FTP site has all the releases like that OneBase ever published. And you can look at the, public FTP site and select those uh, past releases and get information from there. And for example, uh, you know, from the current production release, and you can see in our FTP uh, site that there are several different folders. The most important is uh, ontology and species. So for ontology, um, we have, uh, a list of ontology files, uh, including the definition of the ontology terms and all the genes or entities uh, annotated to these ontology terms. And you can also look at a species folder. And in the species folder, we have all the nematode species uh, that has data. And for example, in the C. elegans species, and uh, the most important is this project, PR, JNA 13758. That is an N2 species. That's a species that people use the most frequent. And in this uh, species folder, and you see like uh, tons of annotated files. Uh, and, and in the annotation folder and outside of annotation folder uh, are mostly um, the sequence annotation. And inside of the annotation folder are the experimental data that one base have annotated the biological experiments. For example, you can get uh, um, the gene IDs. Like, a, like you can, if you are a bioinformatician, you want to import, get a list of all the gene IDs and and as your source uh, data to build your own biological tool. And also like interactions, protein domains, and uh, functional descriptions. Uh, just for example, functional descriptions describe uh, the automated gene descriptions. If you enter any gene in worm base, the first thing you see at the overview is a paragraph about what does this gene do? What's this function and what kind, where is it expressed? What interact with that? And that actually was created by artificial intelligence, like a worm base uh, build this automated uh, gene description based on the current data or the current data in worm base. And you can also see the legacy information um, those old outdated manual uh, curation in the uh, at the bottom of this description. So like if you expand the legacy manual gene description, you see the bottom part. Those are outdated uh, human written concise description of the gene. But on the top is automated description that's more up to date. And micro publication is an online open access journal uh, uh, operated by OneBase. Um, the point of having this uh, project is that many of us, we have been doing experiments and we have to accumulate until enough data uh, together enough to publish a story. But what about those data that are not enough to publish a story as an official publication? And oftentimes after students left the, the lab or, or postdocs leave, and those uh, experimental data just sit forever in notebooks. So one base want to 
uh, capture this kind of information and make sure they're published so that people all over the world can see them and not have to uh, uh, repeat the experiments. So this is an online open access journal indexed by PubMed. Um, so it's a real publication and it's peer reviewed. Uh, peer -reviewed. Um, so like uh, you can, we are going to have a micro publication uh, webinar in November. So if you're interested in this, please definitely join us. So this is one example of how micro publication show up uh, on PubMed. And on PubMed, like, we already have 244 micro publications, uh, papers published in different uh, species, seven species, including yeast. Um, and also uh, the key, the, the beauty of micro publications that the data get directly curated into one base at the moment of publication. Um, because when people create the, the, the paper using our online form, uh, the data, the paper like uh, was already processed and the data types were flagged and the information was extracted in our pipeline. So this is great for the community and it's great for the worm base because it minimized um, the curation effort of going through these papers. So this is just how one exam, exam uh, we, we also, besides the uh, micro publication, I also want to mention the first pass, um, uh, 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 the, the, the also first pass pipeline of worm base. And in the, net, in the worm field, we, get, we ha already have like a more than 30,000 uh, 30, uh, publications, uh, uh, primary uh, research articles published. And every year we get about 1,500 new papers. But you may be surprised that at worm base actually, we only have nine biological curators. So the nine of us, it's impossible to go through 1,500 papers every year. And, uh, and get information from all of them. So that's why we send emails to the authors and ask you for help. So I'm sure some of you have already got the information. And so this is also a uh, first pass form. Like uh, they ask you to confirm like uh, what is already in the paper. And we actually already uh, have text mining tool like uh, to go through your publication and uh, figure out what is possibly there and already in extracted some of this information. And we just ask you um, to, to confirm if it's true that it has this kind of information and in certain fields like allele phenotype, allele sequence. And we, we hope authors can input this data uh, because you know your gene the best, you know the allele the best. So it's the most efficient for you to enter this information into our web form and so that it can go directly into our, our database. And, and by participating in the author uh, first pass, you, you provide us the most uh, accurate information. You flag papers and tell our curators what should be looked uh, into. And we also, uh, you also submit data directly to one base. So every week uh, we process newly published papers and we uh, contact authors, and then you can follow the link and fill out uh, the form. And we actually acknowledge our contributors in Wormbase. You get credit for what you do. So for just for example, the Wormbase uh, community curation of phenotypes. And on the Wormbase website, uh, you can submit your data. And then you can be taken to the uh, data submission form. Uh, we have several different data submission form. And you can choose the phenotype data submission. And then you can fill out the form. Like uh, it's, it's very much. Uh, similar to how our curators uh, do the curation. And you can enter the, the information there and they will be uh, reviewed by curators and published. And we have made a great progress on one base uh, community curation uh, in the past five years. We already have more than 9,000 phenotype annotations uh, made by community curators, by people like you. Um, and also more than 3,000 RNAi annotations, more than 2,000 uh, alleles connected to phenotypes and more than, uh, 100, uh, more than 1,000 papers curated. And that involved 749 community curators. And they are uh, recognized on our website. On the Wormbase website, uh, you can see like there's a, 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 always a little table ranking the top uh, contributed community uh, curators. And also in this, um, your name, like uh, those community curators, 
not only like you are recognized on the uh, front side of the Wombase uh, website, um, front page of Wombase website, in those specific uh, data pieces, like for example, if you look at this um, uh, page of Wombase page, like uh, of this allele, you can see the curator's name there uh, is a community curator, and you'll get recognized by everything you do, did for one base. And I also want to mention that one base is uh, a hub to connect the communities. Uh, in the one base con community uh, menu, you can locate all the one labs. So uh, they are listed by uh, according to uh, lab code, and you can see where the affiliation, who to contact. Uh, so you can find, locate a specific labs who, who do one base uh, worm, worm uh, research. And you can in the worm, worm community, you can find colleagues. Like uh, for example, you want to look for a colleague. Like uh, just for example, if you look for me, Wen Chen, and you type the name into uh, the person page uh, of one base, and you can see two Wen Chen, and you may wonder, okay, maybe it's a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. Actually, there are two Wenchen, indeed, uh, two Wenchen in Caltech. And if you click the same first one, you see, oh, Wenchen in Stenberg Lab. Maybe that's 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 the Wenchen we're looking for. That's the Wenchen who's speaking now. But no, that's the other Wenchen in Stenberg Lab. Uh, I don't know for uh, one base. So I'm the, actually the second Wenchen here. And you can, you can see that this is my current record like uh, of, of the present page. Uh, you can see like I have a one WB present ID 101 that is separate, uh, that said like I'm a different one chain from the other one chain. And I also have a email related to one base. And in one base, we also have this um, present lineage. Like uh, you can see like uh, who graduated from uh, which lab and uh, or was mentored by someone. And that can help you, like if you are looking for a job or looking for a postdoc position, you can get a reference from those who have uh, worked together with that person or like uh, the employer. And you can ask for their advice, like what's the experience of working there? Is he hardworking? Is he a good candidate to recruit? And so all these present uh, lineage, present uh, connection make a worm a very unique field uh, because we are tightly uh, connected. Uh, with each other to support each other. And in our WORM uh, community page, uh, we also have WORM community forum. You can submit your uh, question to the WORM uh, community uh, forum. Uh, for example, if you are looking for uh, a postdoc, you can post there. If you're looking for a job, you can look at it there to see if anyone is recruiting uh, candidates like you. And you can look at our community forum. Uh, you can also look at our meetings uh, to see like the future coming meetings, world meetings, like uh, or webinars. Like we just posted our webinars there. So all of this information like uh, can get you uh, find out like what's going on in the field, and hopefully that also can support your your research. And finally, I'm going to mention that uh, one base. Uh, is now part of the Alliance of Genome Resources. And some of you may have been working in other fields like a fly or mouse or, or SGD. And you probably know that every every mod data mod had their own has their own uh, website, have their own way of doing curation, get information uh, organized. So the point of having the alliance of genome resource is that we want to have a unified platform so that people can come to one site and find information from all species, doesn't matter uh, which species they work on. And they can do the search in the Alliance of Genome Database, uh, Alliance Genome, and then find their information. And so this is a website of, of uh, the Alliance, uh, alliancegenome.org. So you can go there to explore the information uh, we do not have a webinar scheduled for Alliance yet, uh, but we hope in the future we can have something like that because eventually uh, the goal is like for all the mods, mods to merge together into the same platform. So this is the future uh, for one base. And I'm going to start my uh, presentation here. Um, please keep in touch with us. Uh, uh, our email is help at onebase.org. And also, you can 
you can uh, for all the uh, information related uh, to community curation, uh, you can email us at curation at onebase.org, and you can also contact specific curators for questions related to in their field. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, I ended the talk really early. I didn't realize that I can speak so fast, but I hope um, I hope that uh, you can uh, we can we, we can make uh, make this time available for everyone to ask questions. You can enter questions into the chat box. Actually, quite a few Worm uh, staff are here. Worm based staff are here, and we hope to answer your questions. Thank you, Wen, for the presentation. So that concludes the presentation itself. We will now begin the um, Q&A and answer the questions that have been typed into the um, chat panel. Okay, thank you, Wen, and thank you everybody for joining us uh, for today's inaugural Warm-Based webinar. Um, feel free to put any questions you might have in the chat. So far, uh, we have two. Um, and so um, the first one is about um, interrogating worm base for uh, differential expression or localization patterns for specific classes or families of genes. So the question is, can worm base um, be used for identifying genes based on their differential expression within the cell? For example, um, could you find uh, all kinases that are expressed in um, dendritic compartments uh, within neurons. Um, so I think maybe this is something that um, maybe Daniela, you and I can tag team <laughs> answer this one. Um, Daniela Ricciti does um, our expression pattern curation um, and I do some of the functional curation with Go. Um, so I think that um, this is something that uh, you could use our worm mind tool to do. Um, what you could do uh, is make a list of um, the uh, C. elegans gene products that have uh, either say a particular uh, protein domain, a recognizable kinase domain, or you could also use uh, the Go molecular function uh, controlled vocabulary to identify genes or gene products that um, have been annotated to uh, a kinase. Um, and then you could use that list to then uh, query um, expression data for tissue and subcellular localization. Daniela, do you or anyone else at Wormbase, would you like to add to that? No, I think that answers it. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, you can also, if you're interested in a specific cellular compartment, you can also um, search for that cellular compartment via the search and see and output a list of genes that are expressed, but it wouldn't uh, necessarily um, aggregate them by um, kinases or uh, specific classes. And also I wonder if the uh, Raymond, uh, do you want to address whether the ontology browser can, can help something on this? Raymond, you can unmute yourself. Um, yes. The, uh, if, uh, well, but I think that functionality, um, if, you know, uh, is already covered in the warm up, that it should traverse the hierarchy. So I think the, uh, the idea is that because these ontologies are hierarchies and um, information that are annotated to a finer detail um, of uh, sort of control vocabulary uh, in terms of, let's say, uh, the uh, geontology, subcellular localization, the information or annotation should be propagated to the higher, broader terms. And that functionality is in uh, warm up. But graphically, you could also um, traverse the hierarchy using the ontology browser, but uh, that uh, we will talk a bit more about that in a later webinar. Okay. Yes, that's great. 
Thanks. Um, so our next question uh, is about the different kinds of sequence data you can uh, access uh, through, um, through WormBay. So the question is, what is the difference between the type of sequence information you can get through Parasite Biomart versus what you can get just by going to a gene's uh, page and looking at the sequence information there? I would uh, so I will first say, yeah, I would just first say like a parasite biomod is a data mining tool. So like if you have a list of genes, like I suppose, uh, definitely you don't want to go through gene page one by one. But Kevin is here. Do do Kevin want to answer this question or say something about parasite biomod and say something more about it? Kevin. You can unmute yourself. Well, yes, the key difference, uh, well, first of all, the data, uh, the underlying data should be identical. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's the, uh, the you can, uh, well, Biomart, uh, as one said, is particularly designed to get, you know, to access the same information for a list of genes. Uh, and obviously, if you go to the gene page, it's meant for getting a, a broader uh, array of information for uh, any given gene. But of course, you know, you could go to Biomart uh, and just uh, query for one gene. Um, you know, it may not be the most efficient way of. So I think uh, that's that's about it. Kevin, do you want to add something about the the parasite biomat? So I didn't catch the original question. What was it? I'm sure I can read that again. Um, so the question is, what is the difference between the type of sequence information you can get through Parasite Biomart versus what you can get just by going to a genes page and looking at the sequence information there? Yeah, I mean, as uh, as as has just been said, I mean, it's, it's largely consistent between the two. So I suppose the, per the, the, the sequ sequence data that you're looking at on a gene page is generally whole sequences of proteins and cDNAs and uh, cDSs. Whereas, so you can you can get that from the parasite biomark, but we can get get an addition from the parasite biomark, which quite a lot of people like, is you can get upstream sequences. So you can say, give it a list of genes and say, give me all of the regions that are kind of 500 base pairs up, upstream of these genes. So, uh, and you can do that in bulk across a, a, a list of genes. Um, so really, that's what kind of parasite biomart is geared towards. It's, it's geared towards uh, is identifying, listening, obtaining information in bulk about those genes. Okay, great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, okay, so moving on, we sort of had two questions uh, relating to RNA seq and uh, expression data sets. So the first one is. Uh, could we talk more about the expression data set locator? Uh, so for example, uh, our user would be interested in finding all RNA-seq data sets after exposure of C. elegans to microbes. Um, and in the expression data set locator topics, uh, she didn't find that option. Um, and then related to that, for a given gene of interest, is there an efficient way to navigate the existing RNA-seq data and find out in which cells uh, this gene is uh, differentially expressed? Um, so when do you want to take the first one about uh, the expression? Yes. Um, yeah, the expression data set locator uh, is actually very similar, uh, derived from one basis spell. So in one base spell, we only took RNA-seq data that we already mapped to genome. So there are about 50 RNA-seq data sets, but actually in reality, there are many more RNA data sets in one, uh, but we have not annotated them. That, that means like uh, we, we have not annotated them because we didn't have enough manpower to map them to the genome. 
but that doesn't mean that we cannot take them into expression data set locator. And that is actually on my to-do list because um, when we, you, we used to have, uh, Spell used to be the only source for people to explore rna data datasets, but uh, we developed the expression data set locator later, and that will allow us to put all the RNA data seek, uh, RNA -seq data set, um, just to look at their metadata without taking their, their like uh, actual expression value. So yes, that is something on my to-do list. And thank you for bringing this up, that will move it to the top of the priority. And and the second question, uh, I mean, the existing RNA seq data. Yeah, I want to mention that, uh, well, Kevin can add more to this later. Uh, first, like uh, for all these high throughput data, uh, the way WormBase annotate, uh, uh, the, the primary way uh, WormBase uh, annotate the RNA seq data sets now is to take the expression, differential expression, and annotate them into expression cluster. So expression clusters are list of genes that um, say like it's differentially expressed in this mutant versus the Y type or in this tissue type in versus the whole animal. So, so that is uh, called expression cluster in one base. If you search for any gene in the anatomy, uh, in, in the like expression widget, there's a section called expression cluster. You can see all the expression clusters there. And also, uh, if you go to SimpleMind, for every gene, you see an expression cluster uh, summary. So the expression cluster summary actually goes through all the expression clusters related to this gene and, and have a paragraph say, okay, it's differentially expressed. It's regular, it, it's effect, it's, it expression is affected by this mutant by like a 10, 10 different gene mutations. And it's like enriched in chemicals, like the expression level. Uh, so each gene has about 60, between 60 to around 60 to 100 expression clusters. So that is a, it's a very good way to figure out the information for a, a gene that was never studied before. And I will address details of this in my, in my future webinar in March. Uh, focusing on high throughput data in one base. So uh, Kevin, do you have anything to add uh, to RNA-seq? Because uh, your team is, is the primary uh, curation force for RNA-seq data. Yeah, so what we tend to do for C. elegans, so we keep an eye on the RNA-seq data sets that are being deposited in the archives. Um, and then we have a pipeline that pulls down the primary data. So this is the, the FASTQ files for the RNA-seq reads and um, processes those reads in a standard way by aligning them to the genome and then running standard software to quantify or to, to make estimates for quantification uh, uh, um, according to the data. Um, we also do a little bit of curation um, to kind of um, classify the, the files, the FASTQ files, according to um, uh, metadata on the samples. So for example, the, 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 um, the life stage that they were assayed from, that, that kind of thing. Um, and all of this data is, uh, can, be, can be viewed on the um, expression widget on the, on the gene pages. So there, there's a little box for each study um, and, and there's some graphs showing um, uh, what the uh, expression levels are according across the different samples in the experiment according to this kind of standardized analysis that, that we've done. That's great. Uh, okay. So do we want to move to the next question? Yeah. yeah. Sure, thanks. Uh, so the next question is about uh, gene ontology analysis. So how can Go analysis be performed on WormBase and what all different questions can be addressed on the platform? Um, so I can take this one. Uh, so under the tools menu uh, at WormBase, uh, we have um, an enrichment analysis tool uh, where you can uh, enter a list of genes or upload a list of genes. Um, as well, you can upload um, a file uh, for your background set, and you can actually perform an overrepresentation analysis for both tissue, phenotype, and go. Uh, so that's uh, one tool that we have at WormBase. 
Um, there's also uh, an enrichment tool available from the Gene Ontology website, geneontology.org, and that's a tool developed um, by the Panther uh, group. Uh, there are a number of tools that are available for people uh, to perform GO analyses. Um, we don't necessarily recommend one over the other, but I think just a couple things to keep in mind when you do that is to make sure that whatever tool you are using, um, the developers of that tool make it clear what version of the gene ontology they're using. Um, it's important that they use the most up-to-date version uh, possible because Go does change, um, as well as when you perform the analysis um, to make note of uh, what um, annotation files you've used. Um, and this will all uh, help with reproducibility uh, going forward. Uh, so uh, that would be um, my recommendations for performing Go analyses. Okay, uh, the next question is about uh, finding um, mouse homologs or worm homologs of a mouse uh, gene or protein. So what tool um, can, I, can be used to search for a worm homolog of a mouse gene or protein? Um, I think this is a great use case uh, for the Alliance of Genome Resources that Wen mentioned. Um, on each of the uh, Alliance gene pages, if you were to say search for a mouse uh, gene or protein, um, there's an orthology section on those pages. I uh, will show you um, the different uh, orthologs from the member uh, groups of the Alliance and you can uh, set uh, the stringency um, with which um, those ortholog calls are made. And there are more details about, you know, specifically uh, which methods were used to make that call uh, so that you can uh, view all of that on the Alliance. Is there anybody else you'd like to add to that? Yes, I agree. That's the best uh, way to look at this problem. Okay, great. And then um, the last question we have right now is um, how to find promoter sequences. Uh, so how to look for a sequence present between two genes and find uh, promoter related information. I think that would best go to one of our uh, sequence curators. Uh, well, uh, the uh, I think I think the the best thing to do is probably using JBrowse. Uh, to look at the genomic region and then look, you know, uh, look at all the tracks that, um, that are related to promoter, um, inform you know, uh, containing information about possible promoters and, and uh, uh, transcription star site and all that. Uh, we will have a webinar, I believe, about uh, genome browsers that uh, that are coming. Yeah, that webinar will be held by Scott Kane, uh, November 20th. So make sure you register for that. Scott is here, actually. Yeah, so I'll definitely make sure to add that to this question specifically to, uh, to that webinar. But I think uh, Raymond did a pretty good chance of giving it a pretty good job of giving an overview of, uh, of how to do that. Um, I'll also talk in specifically about uh, if you want if you want to get the uh, the specific DNA sequence and do something with it, like further analysis. I'll cover stuff like that as well. So stay tuned. So far, we don't have any more questions in the chat panel. Um, 
but we'll stick around for a minute or two to monitor that. If you still think you have a question, please do type it into the chat panel now. As always, you can also email us at help at wormbase.org if you can't think of a question now, but you do have a question later, or any clarification to the questions you've already asked. If you still need further clarification, also feel free to email us. Oh, there comes a new one. Yep, one last question. Uh, is it possible to get a copy of these slides? When are we posting uh, the recorded version of this on the Wormbase YouTube channel? Uh, yes, uh, we will uh, publish on the YouTube channel, but I think people may also want to get the slides mm -hmm. because in the past, uh, some researchers told me that they have to run bioinformatics courses. So uh, they hope to get some slides from us, like just make it easier for them uh, when they talk about the Wormbase. So, I mean, I have always have the idea that we should have some kind of way uh, for people to access them uh, like easily all the slides we give uh, for the webinars because we want people to have the, uh, be able to reuse them. So so we can discuss among the one based team like to see what kind of platform we can use to deposit all our slides. For example, maybe slide share or something like, you know, we can have a one base account so that people can download all our slides. But yeah, thanks for bringing this up. We will make it happen and, and we will post. So once the slides are all ready, we, we can post it on, on, the, on the one base site for people to, to get them, access them. Okay, great. Thanks, Wen. And we have, a, we have one more question, <laughs> unless there's something else you want to <laughs> Uh, we have a question about uh, C. elegans metabolomics. So do we have any specific database for uh, the C. elegans metabolome? Karen, do you want to say something about this? Um, I'm trying to find it. I think, um, I think Marianne Wal uh, Walhout has one. We don't. Uh, curate metabolomics right now. We are, this is on our list of things to do. And we, we hope to do this as part of the Alliance of Genome Resources. So um, we can add, I can add more information at a future webinar. Otherwise, uh, just give us a call, give us an email and we can address that question personally. But we will give you more information later about that. Okay, if there are no more questions. Uh, so if there are no more questions, we are almost um, close to the hour. Um, so we'd like to encourage you to sign up for the upcoming webinar series. Um, if you haven't done so already. Oh, is there a question? Yeah, maybe one more last one. Could sure. you put your question in the chat, please? <laughs> We're happy to stay and answer questions if, if people have them. Okay, uh, so this uh, question is, can we suggest any neuron tracking tools for neuroimmune studies? Or software for these? Um, I am not aware of any. Does anybody else at Wormbase have suggestions? This might be- uh, we uh, we, we don't. Uh, so this is uh, kind of a methodology question. Uh, the, 
Uh, I personally uh, do not know of any uh, information about this, but what I would recommend is for you to post this question in the worm-based forum. Uh, and uh, you can find that uh, if you're not already on there, uh, you can find that uh, at Wormbase under the, uh, the menus. Um, so yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's a, a good place to ask questions like that. Raymond, did Ah, so Gary just uh, send the direct URL for the forum. Okay, um, and we do have one uh, another question. Um, are there tutorials to learn how to make queries in SimpleMind, WormMind, and Parasite BioMart, and uh, specifically WormMind? I can say that Simple Mind is so easy that it doesn't require any tutorial. You just look at the website. <laughs> uh, uh, but yes, I can I can create something for that. Um, for Warm Mind, we have the coming Warm Mind webinar uh, on December 18th by Chris Grove, and that will be a very very important one for you to learn how to do things there. And Chris did write a. Uh, Chris did write a, a, a written tutorial for OneMind. Uh, so you can go to the OneBase tools and then uh, on the tools menu, there is a, a about OneBase tools. Like a, and there for each tool, if there's any tutorial, there's a link, you can link to the tutorial. Yeah, just to add to that, I'd also encourage um, users to look at the pre-made templates on the worm mine homepage and those templates give you a lot of sort of ready-made queries that you can use. Okay. And also for Parasite Biomart, we have a coming tutorial on in January. So so the you know so you can uh, expect like that will be a very good detailed tutorial for how to use uh, Parasite Biomart including the real examples. Um, we will also make sure that uh, that is published and we have all the slides and everything available for users. Uh, I don't know that if this is already said, but when you go to WarnMind, the front page, uh, to the right uh, upper hand side, uh, there is a take a tour button. So if you click on that, you actually get uh, uh, wiki pages for how to use warm mind. Um, Karen Yuke, our curators, just posted the um, URL for the uh, metabolomic um, modeling from the Wall Health Lab. So take a look at that. That link is in the chat panel. And a follow up related to that is. Um, where uh, can someone upload experimental uh, metabolomics information? Um, are there any websites that we can recommend? Um, well, what type of information would you like? We, we do collect metabolites that are mentioned in papers. Um, we don't, as I said, we don't have the pathways you can check, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. I, I don't have, we don't download metabolomic information from specific sites. We really just take them from, from papers. There are efforts out there to collect metabolomic information and there, uh, one is called Metabolites. I will post it in the chat. Um, you can check that, that's from uh, EBI. And then there's also a US um, effort called uh, Metabolomic Workbench. Um, again, I, I can, I'll have to look that up and get back to you. 
So uh, Venkanta, if you want to just email Wormbase, or I, I can just, so I have your email address, I can contact you directly about that. Okay, thanks, Karen. Um, and an additional question we have, is there any site to get videos related to techniques used uh, in worms? Yeah, we had a similar like a uh, request in the past, like uh, people ask like where to get good videos about uh, doing injection. Um, so, does anyone want to have any suggestion on how do we want to handle this in the future? Maybe we should discuss inside one base to decide it. Is there anything we can do to help this? Um, Raymond, yeah. Yes, there are. Uh, there is information out there. Uh, there are videos out there uh, related to warm book, related to um, uh, uh, journals that uh, that are uh, particularly designed. Yes, uh, somebody mentioned Jovi, uh, or is that if that's the way how they pronounce it? Uh, so uh, yes, there's stuff out there, and the question is whether or not we should uh, have a page perhaps collecting these. We will think about that. But at the meantime, uh, if you Google search, you can probably find various resources uh, that are already out there. Uh, that's, a, that's a good suggestion, thank you. So three minutes left to the top of the hour. Uh, so Gary Schindelman just posted uh, that one book has some as Riemann just minutes. So one book seems to have a, a one method page. So um, there are no more questions. We can conclude the webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'd like to encourage you to sign up for the upcoming webinar series if you haven't done so already. And you can find this um, information uh, on our homepage from the news section and follow the links there to a form that will give you the entire list including the dates and times and subjects of the webinar series. Thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again in future webinars. Thank you and have a good rest of the week. Bye. Goodbye.